a plea for forgiveness and an expected marriage bring two Rwandan families together 24 years after the genocide that claimed more than 800,000 people, mostly Tutsis, in Rwanda. Viewer reporter Edward Roima recently visited Rwanda and has a story of how the son of a confessed killer married the daughter of a family who lost relatives at the hands of the father. The village of Buguri is just a few kilometers away from the Rwandan capital, Kigali. It was in this village 24 years ago that Silas Bihizi joined other ethnic Hutus in killing his Tutsi neighbors. Among those murdered was Valence Luchiriza's brother, the man's wife, and their three children. Bihizi was arrested in early 1995 for actions he has come to abhor and spent 13 years in prison. He was released to face a community-based court that included victims, relatives and friends set up to speed prosecutions in the genocide. During the trial, he confessed, asked for forgiveness and was sentenced to 13 years, which was the time already served. Among those who participated, I was among them. That resulted in being accused of killing Rukiriza Varen's family, that included his sister-in-law, children, and his elder brother. After his release, he returned to his wife, their seven children, and his farm work. But he worried about meeting the relatives of his victims, something inevitable in a small village. After my release, I decided that confessing to a crime during trial wasn't enough. Then I decided to go to the home of those that had endured a lot because of my crimes and ask for their forgiveness. I apologized because I wanted to free my soul. Rukiriza, whose brother Bihizi had killed, was the key witness against Bihizi. During the trial, Rukiriza argued Bihizi should be sentenced to life in prison. Forgiving someone who ripped his family apart was difficult, but Rukiriza decided to pardon him and move forward. We accepted his apology as a family, but of course that wasn't easy. It required a lot of strength. At first I hesitated, and my neighbors can attest to that. I felt I, felt I could not do it, but thanks to God, I had to accept the apology. Our government encourages us to promote unity and reconciliation and to coexist peacefully. A big step came in 2009, two years after his release. His son, Stanislas Nyomunjeri, approached him with plans to wed Iasente Muraide, Ruchiriza's daughter. When he told me that, it felt like he had opened an old wound. Well, I had asked for forgiveness for the crimes I committed, but I couldn't imagine having to face Rukiza again to tell him that my son wanted to marry their daughter. Muraire's father initially resisted too, but the young couple were deeply in love. My fiancé used to tell his friends that if I don't marry that girl, I would commit suicide. He repeated those same threats to my family when we visited them. Then my father asked why he should go through that. It is then that I made a decision. Instead of losing him, I would rather stay away from my family if they opposed our marriage. Ruchiriza said he relented and blessed his daughter's marriage because he wanted to support reconciliation. Hating reconciliation is adding a heavy burden on yourself. It leads to a lot of stress. If I had not been courageous enough to accept to forgive, I would be a useless person by now. I wouldn't be the man I am now. I would be a drunkard here. I had that courage, and God helped me through that process. Today, both Luchiriza's and Bihizi's bloodlines commingle in three young, beloved grandchildren. Edward Rwema, VOA News, Buguri, in southern Rwanda. The search for Togo's future football champions has begun as the country's national coach launches a grassroots initiative Togo Top Seeds 2018. Through the initiative, the coach hopes to discover and nurture fresh talent 
who will make the West African nation proud in future national and international tournaments. Take a look. Up to 9,000 aspiring young football players from across Togo participated in the Top Seed Togo 2018 selection football program, which aims to find and train future players. Launched by Togo's national team coach, Claude Leroy, the project aims to grow grassroots football in the country and replicate the kind of success enjoyed by Togo's football giants like Emmanuel Adebayo. The selection process is open to youngsters between the ages of 12 to 17 years old who are recruited from all over the country. My dream is to play in a World Cup final. So I am trying hard, I'm working hard every day. So that's my goal, to play in the World Cup final. The players are put through their paces with drills including attacking, defending, passing, receiving and dribbling. Out of 9,000 youngsters, only 60 boys and girls were selected to go to the finals, which was played in Togo's capital, Lomé. As planned and as outlined in the program, the skills that we are testing here are speed and power. Although that's not the most important thing at their age, compared to things like being able to control the ball and dribbling. But most importantly, being able to appreciate what it takes to be able to play football. Because, at the base, one has to be able to play football. There are those who are quick to show off skills, such as dribbling a ball. But that is not enough. We look at a number of qualities to determine if we have the best player or not. At the end of the selection process, three winners were chosen in both the male and female categories. The Sparrowhawks are considered amongst Africa's best teams and a favorite at some of the continent's major tournaments, but they've been dogged by mismanagement and internal conflict in the last few years. Togo is ranked 125 worldwide by football governing body FIFA and 35 by the Confederation of African Football. Well, and that's our show for today. You can also visit us online at voaafrica.com. I'm Vincent McCord in Washington. Chamberlain also has our last word from Lagos. Thanks, Vincent. We look forward to bringing you another show next week. ChannelsTV.com is your source for news, sports, and other programming. I'm Chamberlain, so thank you for watching. Goodbye.